Genesis chapter number 7 and verse number 16. And they that went in, went in male and female of flesh, as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. Of course, in Genesis chapter number 7, we are in the story of Noah and the ark. Noah lived in a scary time. Noah lived in a day that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And every imagination of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. He lived in a time when the God said that the earth was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. It was a scary time to be alive. And on top of all of that, God had told Noah, I've had all I can take of man. I will destroy man uh, that I created from the face of the earth. The judgment of God loomed over the earth and they didn't even know it or wasn't even concerned about it. Noah was living in a scary time. Now I'm not trying to say that you and I are in the days of Noah, but we're sure living in a scary time. Wickedness is running rapid. Good is now evil and evil is now good and it seems like that those that ought to be doing right and staying straight are promoting wickedness and violence in all the land. I mean I guarantee you half the men in here if not more are having to pack a gun to make sure the family is taken care of and that's not getting better that's getting worse because violence is filling our land but the true uh, trouble in our day is that at a judge, uh, at a trumpet sound, uh, the judgment of God will be unleashed, and multi millions of people have no idea that time is running out, and we are at the last moments. It's time to turn back toward the Lord, or time as we know it will be too late. It is a scary time to be alive, but just as it was in Noah's day. We it is the same in our day. In chapter 7 and verse number 1, you'll find out that there was salvation in scary times. Look at verse number 1. The Bible said that the Lord said unto Noah, watch this word, come. Do we see the invitation of salvation? I'm going to get hammered for this, but I believe salvation is always by invitation. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor. The Spirit and the bride say come. Let him that is a thirst say come. Let whosoever will come and drink from the water of life freely. The invitation is to all. It is to come. The invitation of salvation. But in this verse, verse 1, we see the instrument of salvation. He said, let me just go ahead and tell you this. I may say it again, but the Lord didn't tell Noah to go into the ark. He told him to come into the ark. Meaning he is already up in the ark. He was calling him to himself. Salvation is a call for people to come to the Lord. But we see the instrument of salvation. He said, come thou and all thy house into the ark. There it is, the instrument of salvation. Now I've been out here to this beautiful ark. And you may disagree with me, and that'll be all right. But I don't think the one that Noah built looked that good. I think it was built like a coffin. And he said he pitched it within and without with pitch. I don't know exactly what that is or what it looks like, but I'm an old redneck. And we used to roll this black tar on top of the trailer to make sure that it didn't leak. And I believe that's what it looked like on the inside and on the outside. And I believe it was sitting out there, not near no big body water and it looked uh, out of place and it looked horrible and it was kind of an ugly thing and they probably walked by and said uh, we don't need that, there's no use for it, I don't know what we'll ever do with it, it won't work for me, I don't need it you're a crazy man uh, Isaiah said uh, that the Lord uh, had no comeliness or beauty that we should desire him, that ark in Noah's day was the only way to keep from drowning and in our 
third day, Jesus may look out of place and he may not look all that attractive and he may not seem like he works in your life. But if you're going to miss hell, Jesus is the only answer. If you're going to be saved tonight, Jesus is the only answer. He's the only one who could die for our sin. He's the only one that could forgive us. He's the only one that could take the iniquity and stain of sin away from us. He is the only one. The instrument of salvation in Noah's day was the ark, a picture of the salvation in our day. The Lord Jesus Christ. I'm here tonight because of Jesus. I'm going to heaven because of Jesus. Everything I am is because of Jesus. Everything I have is because of Jesus. He is salvation in scary times. When we get to verse number 5, we see service in scary times. Look at verse number 5. And Noah did, did. That is the action of service. See, a lot of us want to serve the Lord, but that basically do nothing. We won't sit around twiddle our thumbs uh, and expect the Lord to do everything. He didn't saw one log. According to this Bible, Pastor, he didn't saw one log. He didn't drive one nail. He didn't paint one bit of that pitch on that ark. It didn't say that he call, uh, cut down a tree, that he drug them logs up. But I say to you that Noah believed God uh, and moved with fear to the saving of his household. Uh, he got to work what he done. It is not just revival to sit in here and thank God for the good presence of God uh, I'm enjoying it but if there's no did uh, in our Christian life then we're missing something the action of Christianity the action that we should be doing in these scary times uh, is we ought to get busy whatever God's given you to do roll your sleeves up skin your ears back and go at it with all you got I believe if Noah had sat around and twiddled his thumbs, uh, he would have died with the rest of them in the flood. It wouldn't have bothered God one bit to walk down, drag out a pile of dust, form it again, uh, and start all over. The action of service is dead. He said the Bible, uh, the Lord, uh, Noah did according unto, here's the next word I want you to see, the all of service. He did according to all that the Lord commanded him. See, uh, many of us, our problem, I'm going to tell you what the problem is in the 21st century independent fundamental Bible believing, walk right, keep it tight, sp drink, sprite, and spit white. Church. Is we want to do God's will, but we want to do it our way. God came to Noah and said, I'm sick and tired of man. I'm going to destroy him from the face of the earth. Let me just go ahead and throw this out and make anybody watching real mad. I believe that salvation in the Old Testament was the same as it is in the New Testament. They wasn't saved by works. They are saved by faith, uh, by grace through faith, just like we are. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, the Lord came to him and said, I'm going to drown everybody. You believe me? Noah said, I believe you. He said, you better build an ark 450 feet long, 75 feet wide and 45 feet high here's the plan, get with it and Noah followed every commandment of the Lord and you and I would be a long way down the road if we would learned just to do God's will and do it God's way and do all that the Lord commanded us there's salvation in these scary times there's service in these scary times but my heart is in verse 16 tonight in this little phrase and the Lord shut him in and I believe that shows us security in scary times I'm going to preach a few minutes on that thought security in scary times in a day when there seems to be no stability in a day when there seems to be no security when nothing seems to be safe anymore and nothing seems to be precious anymore I'm glad and listen I'm affected as I travel up and down the road preaching different churches I'm hurt deep in my heart to find Christians who have been saved for decades who've never nailed it down I'm going to make a statement here hear me and hear me well I believe there's some something better at than being saved I believe there's something better than being saved that's being hold on now 
You said, I heard all my life preachers say, come get saved. Ain't nothing better than being saved. I ain't fussing with them. I just told you what I believe. I believe there's something better than being saved. Yeah. Here it is. This is better than being saved. Being saved and knowing it. Yeah. Without a doubt, knowing it. No preacher can shake you. No verse or twist you up. I'm saved and I know it. You might not know it. Uh, you might not believe it. You might think he just a put on. Uh, I've been many of them said it won't last. There's nothing to him. But I know that I know that I know. Uh, I ought to know. I was there when he saved me. Hallelujah. I was there when he brought me from death under life. There's security. You don't have to walk around wringing your hands, biting your fingernails off to the elbows drinking maylocks and eating tubs I don't need a nerve pill to calm me down I've got security in these scary times we're going to look at this little phrase watch this little phrase and the now let me just point this out I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed but I'm married to a school teacher and my school teacher wife told me that that little word the is what is known in the English language as a definite article. It means whatever comes after it is the put in a class all by itself. He didn't say, and the Lord shut him in. He said, and the Lord shut him in. The same one that said, I am the way meaning I'm the one and only ain't nobody else I am the truth I am the life the same one said I am the good shepherd he didn't say I'm just a good shepherd he said I'm the good shepherd I'm the chief shepherd I'm, I mean he is the he's in a class all by himself first of all I want you to notice I find security I find security in his person the but what's this next word Lord if you notice in your King James Bible, that word Lord is in all capital letters. That's not a misprint. It's done that way because that is the English rendering, if you will, or the, well, what would be the Hebrew word Yehovah or Jehovah. Let me just give you the definition of that. The word Jehovah or Lord in all capital letters speaks of the self-sufficient one. The one who needs nobody else. I'm going to bust your little bubble. God doesn't need you. When he was walking around and they said, tell all them disciples to quit shouting. He said if they do, the rocks will just cry out. He's been feeding birds uh, every day since the day he created them. You watch them. They'll squawk early in the morning and bless his name. Uh, they'll get something to eat. I fish a lot. So I see all them fish catchers, birds, and they'll pull that fish out of the water. They'll go over and get on the dock or the land. You know what the first thing he'll do? He'll tilt that head back to heaven uh, to swallow that fish. I'm telling you, God doesn't need you. He doesn't need me. He doesn't need the you S of A. He doesn't need a government. He doesn't need a war a machine. He doesn't need an army. He's God all by himself. He's God if you love him and he's God if you hate him. He's Lord if you take him and he's Lord if you reject him. He's Lord if you think he's doing it right and he's Lord if you don't. He's Lord no matter what you're going through. He's Lord. He's always been Lord. He's always going to be Lord. Nobody will impeach him. Nobody will pull him off his throne. Uh, nobody will vote him out uh, nobody will overtake him he'll be Lord uh, through the age while the ages roll uh, he'll be just as much Lord uh, as he is now and you let hell uh, come in like a flood uh, and the devil roar like a lion uh, and the democrats take over but I have security cause the one I serve is Lord he's Lord He's the self-sufficient one. I mean, he doesn't need any help. He is a complete God all by himself. But this name Lord here is not only is he a complete God, but that's the name he used when he cut a covenant. When he made covenant, he's a covenant-making God. Remember when he cut the covenant with Abraham? You know what Abraham was doing? Abraham was asleep. The horror of darkness came over Abraham. He fell asleep. And God, the Shekinah glory of God, walked through the pieces. Now it was Abraham at covenant, but if you boil it right down, God cut a covenant with himself for Abraham. 
Abraham didn't have nothing to do with it. He's laying over there asleep. He didn't know what was going on. That's why when Abraham went into Hagar's tent to help God out, God didn't come along and say, hey, that's it. I'm ripping up the covenant. I'm doing, tearing up the contract. I'm getting rid of you and find somebody else. No, he just told him, knucklehead, that ain't the way we're going to do it. So he came by personally and said, this time that the women... Uh, time of women, you'll hear a cry in your tent. That's why at Calvary you know what happened at Calvary? Jesus hanging between heaven and earth bearing my sins in his own body. You know what happened? God got up walked over and cut the Genesis 1-3 light out and a horror of darkness covered. I believe the whole universe went dark. They stood in thick darkness you could feel and in that thick darkness it locked God's son in with God and it locked me and you out. We had nothing to do with it and in that thick darkness. The sun from the cross I don't know if that's a helping you but it's helping me tonight to know that the sun cut a covenant with God. It didn't have anything to do with me. That's why after I got saved, I faltered I failed, I sinned. Jesus didn't come along and say that's it. I'm ripping up your salvation. I'm kicking you off into hell. I'm done with you. No, he just come and said confess your sin. I'm faithful. Means I'll do it every time. I'm just. I can. I have the power to wash that away. Brush you off. Clean you up. Stand you back on your feet again and let you go. You can walk around and stay up tonight. Let me just tell all you insomniacs that's worried. Ain't no need for you and the Lord both to stand up because the Lord that takes care of Israel, He never sleeps nor slumber. Let Him stay up and worry about it. You just go on to sleep. I'm trying to move on, but I want to tell you this. <laughs> I'm talking about the Lord. <laughs> you remember if you will go farther in your Bible, David was king in Israel. And the, uh, the armies of Israel went out against the Philistines. He took the Ark of the Covenant with them. Now the Ark of the Covenant was not God but it was a visible symbol of the very presence of God. It was where God said, I'll meet with you. And His Shekinah glory would stand in between the cherubims. So basically, for illustration's sake, give me a little liberty. They went out to battle the Philistines and they took God with them. And the Philistines overrun the Hebrew army. And God didn't lift a finger to stop them. They put them into flight and run them home. And God didn't lift a finger to stop them. And they picked up, give me liberty, they picked up Israel's God. Stole him. Kidnapped him. God didn't lift a finger to stop him. They marched him back down to the land of the Philistines. They took him into their God, Dagon, half fish, half man. They took him into Dagon's temple and said, I'm going to go ahead. Y'all know I'm making an illustration. They set our God down in front of their God. They came in the next morning. And Dagon had fallen prostrate on his face. And their God was worshiping our God. And our God ain't lift a finger. He ain't done nothing but kill. let him carry him down there and stood all night in Dagon's temple. So if you got a fake God, you got to do what they did. They came along and they lifted Dagon back up and set him back in his place. And they went out and they came in the next day and guess what happened? Dagon had fallen on his face before God except this time his hands had all broke up and his head was all broke off and all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Dagon back together again and the priest said that's too much God hadn't lift a finger God hadn't done a thing he said that's too much God for us you got to get that God out of here build a cart get some milk cows send him back do something said take him down there to Ashkelon and put him they picked God up took him to Escalon. He ain't left a finger. Hadn't done a thing. Disease and death broke out. He said, too much God for the, us down here in Escalon. Said, get him, take him over at Gath where all them giants are. Maybe they can handle him. Pick God up, took him over at Gath, set God down in Gath. Wouldn't long disease broke out. Death, they started dying. He said, build a cart. Get two milk cow. Put gold and uh, ointments on, uh, uh, ornaments on it. Make gold. Send it back. Let him go. Said, that's too much God for us. I told 
told you all that to tell you this the Lord we serve the Lord of this Bible my Lord can do everything without even doing anything you don't need thunder and lightning we don't have to have an earthquake we don't have to have signs and wonders we've got him I'm secure in him I find my security in a person we go on in this little phrase what's these next two words and the Lord shut him I find my security in, a, in his protection that word shut means to enclose it means to engulf it means to encamp so what he done now remember the Lord didn't tell him to go in the Lord told him to come in when Noah walked in the ark God just encamped round about him the psalmist said that the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him to deliver them I mean I don't know if you ever understood this but God's in front of me and he's behind me he's on both sides of me he's above me and he's beneath me you want to say well they might get to me well they might if they get through God you want to talk about a secret service you want to talk about private security I'm talking about powerful protection uh, President Trump and all them congressmen and senators don't know anything about being protected like you and I who serve the thrice holy God uh, we is engulfing us he is encapping us he is around us shut him he shut him my dad was a policeman when I was a young kid probably 11, 12 years old they didn't have all them insurance rules like they got now I would go out and get in the patrol car my dad was a patrol officer I'd ride with him. I've talked on the radio. I, you know, really, I mean, I was like a little mini policeman. I've been in the bars. We didn't have bars. We didn't have sports bars and clubs. The high class people had honky tonks. And the rednecks had beer joints. And I've been in them with him. One of them beer joints was having a knockdown drag out. My dad loved movie popcorn. On second shift, he'd go by the movie theater about seven every night and get a little bag of that popcorn and get us a drink. We was out there. We had that tube of 60 air conditioning. You know, you rolled out. You young folk had to ask somebody. As a time, you rolled the window down, you grabbed the handle, you rolled it down like that. He'd roll both windows down and we got too hot. He'd run 60 mile an hour and cool you off. We were sitting there just tooling along. We was eating that popcorn, drinking a drink, cutting up, you know. And all of a sudden a call came out. And one of them beer joints, they was having a knock down drag out. And my daddy said, throw this, dump the popcorn and the drinks. No, I didn't throw the cups out. He was a policeman. I dumped the popcorn in the drinks, throw the cups down in the floorboard. He said, roll that window up and lock that door. <laughs> Used to, you didn't beep, beep, flip. You push the little toggle down. When you wanted to open, you reach and pull it back up. I reached over and locked it. He's riding down the road, and I, I call it the four barrels. I don't know much about motors or engines, but you'll know what I'm talking about if you ever heard a police car. You know, you hear a police car coming, it goes, whoop, whoop, whoop. When the four barrel, whoop, whoop. When it kicked in, he was rolling his window up. He said, now what I'm going to do down there, there's only one driveway in and the same driveway out. He said, I'm going to slide the driver's side of this car into that driveway. I'm going to pull this slapjack out in one hand. I'm going to pull this flashlight out in the other hand. I'm going to put all them fighting on the ground. I'm going to put them in jail. When I get out, you lock this door behind me. I said, Daddy, what if they, what if they get out here in the car? He said, if they get out here in the car, they'll have to come over my dead body because if it gets that bad, I'll drop this slapjack. I'll pull this gun out and I'm go they're going to jail and they won't touch you he said just lock yourself in but now I'm going to stretch it just a little bit and say it preacher way he told me lock you, just lock yourself in he told me said, when I get out just shut 
yourself in. Amen. And he got out and I hit that toggle and locked that door. I was looking across there and my daddy waited up in all them big old men fighting. And I now I know this is a bad time to tell this story, but blood was a flying from the left hand and knots were flying up on the right hand and he is a kicking and a punching and throwing people around. I mean it got so good I cracked that window and put my lips up there at the top of it and said get them daddy get them I'm going to tell you if something's going to get to you they're going to have to get through our heavenly daddy every once in a while when God's been protecting you when God's been taking good care of you you ought to roll the window down every once in a while and say thank you Lord thank you daddy thank you father you're doing a good job get them get them get them I'm shut hallelujah I'm enclosed I'm in camp What's this word right quick? That's powerful protection. What's this? He said, and the Lord shut our next word, him. Wait a minute now. My mama drug me to church every time the doors open. I've been to Bible school and Sunday school and Bible study and all of that. And I know one thing. I've known it since I was that high. There's more than Noah on that ark. There's Noah and his wife, his three sons and their wives. There's eight people on that ark. But he didn't say him the Lord shut them in. He said the Lord shut him. Well, why in the world did he just say him? Did he not shut the rest of them in? Well, of course he did. And I'm glad you asked because I'm going to tell you what I think. He said and the Lord shut him in because he didn't want him to just know that it was powerful protection. He wanted him to know it was personal protection. I'm not just stirring around up here because it's a manual Baptist church. I'm not just going to bless you because you're a part of this church. I'm going to bless you because you're you. I'm going to protect you because you're you. You may feel like an outcast. You may feel like your family don't want you. You may feel like this group or that group or this brethren or that sister don't want you. But you remember, they ain't getting any more from the Lord uh, than you are. He don't have any favorites. He don't have any second fiddles. I mean, he said we were heirs of God. God uh, means everything he's got belongs to me. Join heirs with Jesus. He won't give Jesus more than he'd give me. I'm talking about personal. That the big God of heaven that sits on high and looks down low is concerned about me. And he said, I'm going to take care of you. I, I find security in his protection. I find security in his person. Well, I'm almost out of words. So I'll give you this and I'm finished. I find security in his positioning. He said, and the Lord shut him in. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I believe in security of the believer. I believe if a man gets born again, man, one boy, girl gets born again, washed in the blood, truly saved by the good grace of God, they are saved forever. I believe in it. You say, I don't find it in the Bible. Well, let me say it to anybody that has any problem. I believe in eternal life. He not only give us, preacher, in John 3, he said that you might have eternal life in verse 15. Eternal life's the life of God. That's no beginning, no end. That's verse, through John 3, 15. Eternal life. Meant he give me, he not only give his life for me, he gave his life to me. I got the life of God on the inside of me. How could I get lost? And then he said everlasting life. Everlasting has a beginning, but never has an end. That's John 3, 16. But in, that little word in, I in, it is the biggest word in the Bible for the security of the believer. If you ever realize what this little word in means, you'll never doubt. You'll never doubt. I'm going to tell you what it means. Let me show you by giving you the truth about in. Now that morning when the Holy Ghost came to me, I got up from that pew, walked down. I could take you within two feet tonight of where I got born again. Yeah, yeah. Only reason I say two feet, Pastor, is they extended the pulpit. Yeah. I can't remember if it's six feet or eight, and I'd have to pull a tape measure to find exactly where the altar was. 
But when I got born again, according to this Bible, and I believe everyone here believes this, if you do say amen, when I got saved that morning, Jesus came and lived inside of me. So he's living in me. And a lot of times we say, I hope God shows up. Well, I wasn't worried about him showing up because he came when I came. I'm more interested in him showing out, amen. I knew he was going to be here because he came when I came. And he came when you came. But anyway, he's with me. So if I go to the right place, he goes with me. If I go to the wrong place, he goes with me. Everywhere I walk, he walks with me. He talks with me. I can't get away from him. Everywhere I go, he is. Because the, we have this treasure in earth and vessels. God dwells down. You can't see him. But he's, matter of fact, so he's in there right now. In the person of the Spirit. Somebody's a pulling on the joy of bells. I'm talking about being in. Down in inside of me God lives inside of me you believe that but did you know this not only did God put Christ in me but he put me in Christ see I got two lives preacher I got a practical life you're looking at it I'm here at Emmanuel Baptist Church trying to preach this great word of God that's practical but I got a positional life positionally I'm in Christ. Now I'm old shocky, but Jesus Christ has a practical life and he has a positional life. Positionally, guess where Christ is? He's in me. No, that's practical. His pra guess where he is practically? He's seated, flesh and bone. Not in the spirit, flesh and bone. He's seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Practically, in flesh and bone, there he is. Positionally, I'm in him and he's in me. Everywhere I go, he goes. So if I'm in him, wherever he is, I am. You'll catch up in a minute. You ever heard people stand up and testify or somebody sing? I'm homesick this morning for a place I've never been. Yeah. Well, from the time I was a kid, that phrase used to drive me nuts. I said, how in the world can you be homesick for somewhere you've never been? Then I found out what in meant. Yeah. When he saved me, he came and lived in me, and he put me in him. Yeah. So what I'm really is, I'm homesick for where I already am. Yeah. Yeah. Am I preaching the Bible? The Bible said that and we are seated together. God hath seated us, past tense. It's already a done deal. See, I've told my family, when I die, don't come by and tell them, we're sorry your husband's dead. We're sorry your daddy's dead because I won't be dead. You know what's going to happen when you hear the words, Brother Weaver just fell over dead. Don't believe a word of it. Because what's going to actually happen is this practical is going to finally catch up with my positional yeah. buckle your seat belt and I'm going to go be where I already am yeah. that's what in means you say well listen I can take this verse and make you doubt it. you won't make me doubt it because I know I'm in you won't talk about being the in crowd I'm in if he's seated at the right hand and you won't send me to hell you got to throw him up in the third heaven you got to pull him off the throne and you got to banish him to hell because the only way to put me there is to put it glory to God you won't talk about being secure in these scary times it may end the day they may drop you say they may drop atomic bomb I hope they drop it right here in my hip pocket and I'll catch up and go be where I already am hallelujah that's the truth about in. I give you this, I'm finished. The trust of in. When God told Noah to build this ark, he didn't build a steering wheel so he didn't have any control over it. He didn't build a gas pedal or a brake. He didn't have a rudder. He didn't have a, a windshield so he couldn't see where he was going. He didn't have side view or rear view mirrors so he couldn't see where he came from. He only had one thing. You know the one thing that God let Noah have for himself? He let him build a window. Right in the very top of it. And if I'm not mistaken, it was about 18 inches by 18 inches. When he let them birds go, all he could do was stick his arm out and let him go. And then stick his arm back out and let him come back to him. He couldn't have got out of it if he wanted to. He couldn't even get, hardly get his head up there to get his head. If he had a big head like mine, I know he couldn't get it out of it. All he had was that window. 
So when that old ark was arching and lurching, it was going sideways and hitting here and banging there and dropping off one of them high waves and all of that. You know the only thing that Noah could do? He could stand right in the middle of that ark and look up through his window and trust him. When my oldest two kids were uh, young, they were too smart to say, are we there yet? We'd go on a trip. They wouldn't say, are we there yet? They knew we wasn't there because I was still driving. But they'd always ask, how much farther? How much longer have we got? And we had an old Chevrolet Corsica, I believe it was, and the back seats had pulled down. And we'd make them pallets and tell them, say, lay down on that pallet and take a nap. And maybe by the time you wake up, we'll be there. I never one time did they ask me, Diddy, do you know where we're going? Sometime I didn't. <laughs> do you know where we are? No, and I ain't going to stop and ask for no directions. Yeah. But they never asked me. They never said, did you put enough gas in? Did you reserve a motel room? Do we have us enough money to eat? They never asked me any of that. They'd just pull that down, get their little pallet, stick their legs in the trunk, and they'd lay down. And I think there's somebody here tonight ought to just, you're in but you're a nervous wreck. You know what you ought to do? You ought to just come and climb up in his arms. Just climb up in his lap and say, tell me what you want me to do and let me know when, you, when we get there. I'm trying to close, but I'm going to throw this in. When that shepherd in Luke 15 went after that lost lamb, the Bible said when he found it, I started to preach that tonight, when he found it, he takes that lamb, he puts it on his shoulders, he left 99 in the wilderness. But you know what he does with that one he found? The Bible said that when he come home, he called all his friends and neighbors and said, Rejoice with me, my, the lamb that was lost, I found him. I'll tell you what some of you need to do. You need to realize we up on his shoulders, no safer place. We're in the ark, if you will. Just look up through, just look up. Quit looking around. Uh, quit looking around. Uh, quit trying to figure it all out. Uh, just climb up on his shoulders uh, and let him take us to the house. There's security in these scary times. Let's bow for prayer, Father. Thank you for the truth of your word and the power of your spirit. And I pray you'd take the feeble effort of thy servant. And do what only you can do. Lord, if there's someone here that needs to get in, if there's someone here that's struggling, I pray, God, that when they leave tonight, they'll have security. I pray that we'll trust the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Lord of this Bible. Work your will, magnify your son. Do what I can't do, say what I can't say, be what I can't be. We'll give you all glory. We'll say God did it all. To God be all the glory both now and forever. Jesus' name, Pastor Yuka. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.